I think the biggest purpose of having reenactments these days is to try and engage with the modern public and it's trying to sort of bring to life in as realistic a way as one can those things that happened all that time ago. History is about people, what happened to people, what decisions they made. Uh, and I think to the modern person, if you can link a person's experience that they might or might not be able to comprehend with something that happened all that time ago, that they're going to learn an awful lot more about it. Um, with reenactment, there's obviously there's the battling side of things. Quite a lot of reenactors will train to do specific roles. So, for instance, on the battlefield, you get a lot of people who dedicate themselves to being effective archers. And of course, in a reenactment scenario, an effective archer is someone who can get the arrows where they want it to, not too far and into the audience, not flatten the level so it's going to kill anyone if it actually hits them. Um, and they're using flu flu arrows in, in the battles, which is essentially a, a blunt tip, but then with a big rubber stopper on the end. And then other people um, will practice particularly being good swordsmen. Uh, and there are still, you know, the, the, the medieval manuals are still out there, and there are people who make a living of teaching people sword play. From a, an authenticity point of view, if you do a choreographed fight, you can make it much more authentic looking to the audience because you can do headshots because your recipient knows the headshot's going to come, can parry it, block it out of the way and then take a, take a riposte in. Um, so you get the full flow of a fight. Um, and again, these guys, the Battle of the Nations guys in particular, who do the full contact, the full body contact, again, you get to see the sheer thuggery of medieval warfare and they literally hit someone till they fall over and that's you know quite blood curdling it's not everyone's cup of tea but it gets you it gets across the the real violence uh, of the time as times evolve that still goes on but more and more people are branching out and, and in also doing living history interpretation um, which takes the authenticity up um, to, to new levels because not only then are, are these these men and women's gear as good as they can get them using the right sort of dyes on their clothing the right sort of weaves the right kind of armor finish the right period of armor um, but also then their eating equipment their bowls their plates their tents all that sort of thing they strive to make those as good as possible as well and as authentic for the period I think one of the reasons it's becoming slightly more popular is that it's a lot easier now to buy things. In the old days, if you wanted something, you had to make it, unless you were extremely rich and knew someone who made armour. Uh, these days, though, you can, there, are, there are around nine, uh, between eight and nine, depending on the year, um, reenactment fairs every year. We have, we'll have a big reenactment market here at Bosworth in our anniversary event. They've been doing the anniversary events here at the Battlefield Centre since the late 70s and it's one of these things that, you know, looking at the old photographs, it actually typifies the, um, the development of reenactment. And now I have to say the, um, the, 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 the quality of the reenactors really is superb. We have the Wars of the Roses Federation who uh, are made up of loads and loads of member household groups. So again, from all over the country, we've got Destria who are providing the, the, the horses. They'll be doing a skill at arms on horseback uh, demonstration. They'll also be doing jousting tournaments and also providing the knights during the battle or the battles because they're doing the Battle of Cheeksbury and the Battle of Bosworth as well. So visitors will get to see two full-scale battle reenactments. First one, a Yorkist victory, and of course the second one, uh, Henry Tudor's victory. Uh, there'll also be lots of gunners on the uh, at the event on the site. Um, during the 2005 to 2010 archaeological um, survey, we found 34 cannonballs on the field, so we know that they played a major part in the battle. So that's something we like to promote as part of our living history offer. So you can come and talk to the gunners about you know, what they, how their guns are made, what their guns are called, because they all have names, um, and, you know, how they make the ammunition and all this sort of thing, and the properties of black powder. Um, but they'll also demonstrate them firing, so you get to see the, um, the great belches of flame and smoke and hear the loud bangs, and they are loud. Um, we'll have archery demonstrations. Um, we've got a whole series of talks going on um, from celebrated authors and historians. Um, and if you're interested in reenactment, just as a, 
a curiosity or to join in, that's a really good place to go to have a look at it.